Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, December 2nd. And from an update on delayed Lucas County coronavirus testing results to a look at what might be ahead for us in DeWine's press conference tomorrow. I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's get a quick look at our weather. So things will be dry and mild, and that'll stick around for the rest of the work week with highs in the low to middle 40s. The weekend ahead will be dry on Saturday with the slim chance of an isolated shower or snow flurry on Sunday. And while the Buckeyes are back in action, the Wolverines are actually taking a step back. The University of Michigan football game against Maryland has been canceled. The game was scheduled to play on Saturday at 3.30. In a tweet Wednesday afternoon, staff said that all practices would also be pushed back until at least next Monday. Now, right now, we don't know if that will have any impact on the big OSU Michigan game, but we will, of course, keep you updated every step of the way. And also for our friends up north, a judge today refused to block Michigan's ban on indoor dining as coronavirus cases continue to surge in the state. U.S. District Judge Paul Maloney said that a plausible explanation for the order exists, and that is the fact that people can't eat or drink without taking off their mask, which poses a risk for spreading the virus. So Maloney turned down a request for injunction with just one week left in the three-week ban. Some restaurants predict the move could put them out of business, and they're worried that the order could be extended. Um, so far, that hasn't happened yet, but we will keep you updated if it does. And we got an updated look at the coronavirus data here in Ohio this afternoon. And again, because of unprecedented volume, uh, the Department of Health is behind on reporting a huge number of antigen or rapid test results. So the data in terms of case numbers is still incomplete. But with that being said, here's a look at what is being reported. Today, there were 7,835 new cases compared to the 21-day average of 8,122. There were 123 new deaths compared to the 21-day average of 50. 40, 436 new hospitalizations compared to the 21-day average of 314. And 52 ICU admissions compared to the 21-day average of 31, which is a new pandemic high. Now, locally, tomorrow will be a pretty big day. The governor will be updating his coronavirus advisory map. And as a reminder, last week, Wood County was put on the watch list. What is the watch list? Well, that means that a county has met the criteria to be elevated to level four purple, the highest designation on the map. But because of the way the system is designed, they need to trigger all of those indicators for two weeks in a row to actually be labeled as purple on the map. So tomorrow we will see if Wood County is in fact moved up to purple or if it will stay in the red. Now yesterday we learned that health leaders locally expect Lucas County to be moved to the watch list as well. Um, today the county had its highest one day total of confirmed cases with 474 reported by the health department today. So. As local counties approach a possible, uh, possible purple designation, let's look at exactly what that means. When a county reaches purple, residents are advised to only leave home for supplies and necessary services. So as of now, the designation doesn't enact any additional health orders. So a county is moved into that category once it has met six of seven indicators of concern for COVID-19 spread for at least two consecutive weeks. So here's a quick look at what those indicators actually are. New cases per capita, so that number of cases per 100,000 people that we share with you each week. Sustained increase in new cases. Proportion of cases not in a congregate setting like a nursing home. Sustained increase in ER visits for COVID-19-like illnesses. Sustained increase in outpatient visits for COVID-19-like illnesses. Sustained increase in new COVID-19 hospital admissions and they look at the percentage of intensive care unit beds that are in use. Right now, there are four Ohio counties that are at level four purple, but we will keep you updated tomorrow as that map is adjusted. And the Toledo Lucas County Health Department is urging people who are tested on November 18th on the Lucas County Fairgrounds who haven't received their results yet to get tested again. After multiple complaints came in from people in the area who were tested on that date and didn't get any results, the health department spent three days reviewing just what the issue was and they determined that a small number of those tests went through some sort of shipping problem. So long story short, the new COVID-19 pop-up testing site will take place on December 9th from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. at, again, the Lucas County Fairgrounds. People who were tested on November 18th and never had symptoms can return to work and activities 10 days after 10 days have passed since their test date, which 
has already happened. So now if you have symptoms, if you had symptoms before you went to that testing site, you can go back to normal under these conditions. 10 days have passed since symptoms had started. You're fever free for at least 24 hours without using fever reducing medication. All other symptoms have greatly improved. No additional known exposure to a COVID-19 positive person within the last 14 days. And if you have no current fever or otherwise severe COVID symptoms. Now let me get you up to speed on a change coming for unemployment. Ohioans who apply for unemployment benefits on or before December 6th will be required to conduct work search activities. So work search requirements have been in effect in Ohio for decades, but they were waived back on March 16th because of the pandemic. So this section of law that put that waiver into place is about to expire. Work search requirements will be waived for individuals quarantined or isolated by order of a medical professional though. And allowable work search activities can include anything from applying to a job to posting a resume on ohiomeansjobs.com. Members in good standing with a union hiring hall that refers its members to jobs will be considered to have their work search requirement met. And Ohioans in approved school or training may be considered to have that requirement met if they are attending all their classes and are making good progress. And the CDC has shortened its recommended length of quarantine after exposure to someone who is positive for COVID-19. However, the 14-day quarantine requirement is still in effect in areas where adequate testing resources just aren't available. So the new guidelines will allow people who have come into contact with someone infected with the virus to go back to normal after 10 days, or if they came back with a negative test, they can go back after seven days. Officials said policy changes like this have been discussed for some time as scientists continue to study the incubation period of the virus. So the CDC still urges people to stay vigilant um, with practices like wearing a mask, social distancing, avoiding gatherings, and washing hands frequently. And as the holidays approach, the CDC also recommends postponing travel and staying home. But if you do decide to travel they say to consider getting tested one to three days before you hit the road and then again three to five days after your trip. This should also be combined with cutting back on unessential activities outside of your home for a full seven days after travel based off of the new updated quarantine guidelines. And with the holiday season upon us, the WTOL Gift of Joy campaign sponsored by PNC is kicking off to help benefit children who are served by Lucas County Children's Services. So there are a few options for you to donate. If you wanna go online with Click It, Ship It, Gift It, say that three times fast. You can shop online and ship a gift directly to WTOL 11 Studios and we'll help Lucas County Children's Services gift it to a child in need. So please donate by December 14th to make sure your gift is there in time. To click it, ship it, gift it while you're shopping online, all you have to do is pick whatever gift you wanna to give to a child and then put the WTOL Studios address as the shipping label. And on December 10th, WTOL will host our fourth annual downtown toy drop in the station parking lot at 730 Summit Street in downtown Toledo from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. Everyone is encouraged to drive through and donate a new unwrapped gift for a child. Just make sure your toy donation is in the trunk so we can ensure a contactless experience. Or you can actually drop your gift off in drop boxes at a number of local spots like Yark dealerships, Burger Kings, Lazy Boys. Uh, and, but I have a specific list of all of those locations on our website. I have a link in the description of this video so you can check that out if you'd like. And it is that time of year where we all collectively have Mariah Carey's voice stuck in our heads for a month straight. Carey and her lambs, as I guess she calls her fans, uh, are celebrating Christmas a bit early this year at the top of the Billboard 100 holiday seasonal chart. According to Billboard, All I Want for Christmas is You has topped the holiday specific chart for 41 weeks out of the chart's 46 total weeks since it first launched in 2011. So. It's uh, not going away anytime soon. In fact, there have only been four songs to ever take over the top spot from Carrie. Justin Bieber's Mistletoe is at the number one spot on the chart for a week during the 2011 holiday season. Pentatonic's Little Drummer topped the chart in 2013, along with their song, Mary Did You Know, in 2014. And Ariana Grande hit the number one spot for Santa Tell Me in 2014 as well. Now, All I Want For Christmas Is You was actually released back in 1994 and has consistently returned to Billboard's holiday charts year after year, but it wasn't until 2019, just last year, that it hit the number one spot on Billboard's overall Hot 100 list. So it's got some longevity in it. Do you like that song? I actually wanna know in the comments because I didn't think I liked that song, but every time it comes on, I start involuntarily dancing. So what does that tell you? 
And before I go, here's a little feel-good story for you. We all laugh and joke about TikTok, right? Well, one TikTok star, TikTok star is actually a doing some good, I guess. Inspired by a trend called the Venmo Challenge, Lexi Burke decided to gather donations and pay it forward to service workers who need help during the pandemic. So she asked her followers to Venmo just 25, 50 cents. And to her surprise, within a few days, she had $3,021 in donations from strangers. Lexi surprised her first server with a tip of more than $1,000 while celebrating her birthday with her husband. And from there, her mission just took off. Since then, she surprised more than 100 strangers from nail techs to Uber drivers. And each one was funded by thousands of small donations from her followers. So now she just hopes these acts of kindness inspire her followers to go out there and do that in their own lives. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.